This conversation was sponsored by BitSquare, a Tor-based, anonymous, and decentralized Bitcoin exchange. Learn more at BitSquare.io. Vlad Samfir on blockchain governance, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. Um, Artchain Casper, his work with, uh, his collaboration with Cinero, and much more. Hello everybody, I am Juan Galt with CoinLympics, and I had the opportunity to meet up with uh, Vlad Samfir. He's one of the lead researchers of Ethereum and uh, he's working on Casper right now, the next proof of stake protocol for Ethereum. And uh, we met up at a Vancouver uh, Cinero uh, governance uh, conference uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, we had a great time, I mean, just in general in the conference and, and had some really good conversations. And uh, I managed to get a, a pretty good interview with him. So, you know, here it is. So Casper, um, the Proof of stake protocol for Ethereum that you're working on is uh, uses a, has a collateralized proof of stake sort of model that I think is really interesting and it's sort of kind of like a, a, a betting platform where you lose you, you can't lose if you get the wrong if you do the wrong thing. What 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 is Casper and, and and tell us about that 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 system that you got there. Sure. Yeah. Um, so Ca Casper is a security deposit based proof of stake protocol uh, that relies on bets on the state of the consensus and on blocks in order to uh, converge on the state and to like you know finalize decisions uh, about like transactions so it's basically a proof of stake protocol uh, which is like kind of an alternative to proof of work for for ethereum it's also going to be useful uh, in a non-economic context but you know it's primarily designed for uh, kind of a public blockchain you've been working um yeah it seems like you and uh, the scenario community are sort of working together on some stuff uh do you want to talk about what what kind of work that is sure so i've been working with uh greg meredith specifically uh on casper and kind of getting to a point where we can formally verify casper um for over a year now um and you know, it's been a, a long ride, and we still have a long way to go. But uh, you know, we're we're coming to a point where not, where we can formally verify uh, the basic convergence properties of Casper, um, which I think is like kind of really exciting, um, and really a lot of the work. Uh, and then there, we're gonna have to. And this, this after finding just, just proving the convergence on like a binary consensus, we're gonna have to generalize it to a virtual machine, and then uh, and then add the kind of economics and validator rotation. So there's still some work to do, um, but uh, I really like working with Greg because he has a lot of experience in this formal verification stuff. I think it's like super important that you know this kind of mission critical software is formally verified. Can you tell us what it means for software to not be formally verified? Like, I understand that there's layers of sort of interpretation, in different languages, right? What does what does it mean when the what, that, what's the difference between those two? Um, so formal verification basically is kind of like means that you have like a mathematical proof that the algorithms as specified in this proof uh, have certain properties. Um, for like the particular proof that we're doing now is basically um, to do with the safety of the consensus protocol, kind of showing that the or and constructing a protocol that is safe in the sense that clients will kind of only use an estimate when it is truly reliable in the sense that you know given some number of Byzantine faults and whatever possible network uh, events uh, that some fact won't change um, so that kind of that kind of safety uh, determination it, at the moment is, is like kind of the focus of our formal verification
Uh, no, it's more it's more like showing that like the the hashes and the kind of consensus like works on like a higher level. Uh, it, but you know, um, there. I'm not like a super duper expert in formal verification. Like Greg, Greg really is though. Um, the way that I understand it is that you basically have to make a type system that describes the uh, program that's running, and basically the type system is kind of a set of propositions about the underlying process, uh, and you have to reason about the the type system in order to come to conclusions about the behavior of the program, which, you know, that conclusion itself is like a type, which this program will satisfy. And so basically, um, you know, representing things in terms of a type language and doing type checks uh, is very is very kind of closely related to the formal verification efforts that we're doing now. We basically are doing formal verification by, you know, doing math on descriptions of the algorithm. Sure. I mean, I mean, I don't really know that well what our chain does, but basically, you know, my understanding is that it uses Casper and then it has a Rolang virtual machine, which is this recursive higher order pi calculus that Greg Meredith and his team are putting together. Um, and basically, there's like a sequence of compilers so that it can like run on hardware, and it like runs on like. Uh, version of Casper that Greg is working on, which basically is like nested, uh, it's like a nested version of Casper. So he wants to have like sharding built in from the start using this kind of like composable nesting of Caspers. I don't really understand exactly all the details of how that works, but you know, I'm sure Greg has like intuitions for why, why to do it that way. I'm just trying to do it like simpler. Just have like just Casper on like a single thread, and then I'll worry about composing them later. He wants to kind of do it all from the start, uh, which I think is like cool, uh, but also more work. I don't know, and harder for me. I think for him it's like somehow easier, in a weird way. Thank you for watching. Uh, there's other, there's two or three other pieces of this interview that uh, you might be interested in. They're right here. And uh, if you're interested in buying some Ethereum or trading some Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin, you name it, then the top cryptocurrencies, you can best do it at uh, Bitsquare.io. It's a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange, Tor-based, anonymous, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good platform. So uh, check that out. It's definitely one of the best ways to buy cryptocurrencies and trade them. And um, you have an awesome day.